So in this final video, we have to prove that when the GCD of m and n equals 1, no remainder is covered more than once. So let's go ahead and prove this using proof by contradiction. So first we'll assume, assume that a that a remainder is covered more than once. Okay, so we're going to assume it's covered more than once. So what does that mean for our formula? Let's write down our formula again. This formula is being really helpful. So m times a plus b plus p b. Okay, and then where p equals n minus m. So what does it mean for a remainder to be covered more than once? So that means that p b gives the same remainder more than once. So for some for 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 some b one and b two. Uh, let's say we're going to go in the interval 0 to m, right? So we're going to go um, from when b equals 0, from b equals 0 to b equals m. So in that in that interval, um, we have to prove that no remainder is covered more than once. So we're going to assume that it is covered more than once. So that means that for some b1, b2 is less than m, they're both less than m, um, we have the same remainder. Okay, so what does that mean? So that means that p times b1 equals, uh, and remember that, remember when we did with a 5 and 7 example, this pb was not always less than 5. Like one time it was um, 8, I believe. Yeah, it was 8. So we had to take out a 5 and put it in this term, and we had to leave a 3 here. We didn't have to do that, but it looked cleaner. So we prove that p times b1 equals m times some k1, um, m times some k1 plus the remainder, and p times some b2 equals m times some uh, some k2 plus the remainder. So let's go over what that means for sure. So this means that, so remember that b1 and b2 are less than m, as stated. So that means that, given this formula, when we put p times that b1 and p times that b2, we're going to get some multiple of m, possibly. It could even be zero. But the point is we're going to get the same remainder. And I should state here that the remainder has to be less than m. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and see why this causes a problem. So let's copy this down. So p times b1 equals m times some k1 plus r. And p times b2 equals m times k2 plus r. Okay, so now what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to solve for k, the respective k in each one. So we're going to go ahead and say k1 equals p times b1 minus r over m, and k2 equals uh, p times b2 minus r over m, right? So, and we know that k1 and k2, I didn't state this, but k1, k2 are natural numbers. Okay, um... So we're going to go ahead and we're going to subtract. We're going to do k1 minus k2. That's the same as doing these these minus these. So it's going to be p times b1 minus r, and I'm going to subtract this. So it's going to be minus p times b2 minus negative r is plus r over m. Our r's cancel out, and we get p times b1 minus b2 over m. And that has to equal some natural number because k1 minus k2 is a natural number. So if this is a natural number, that means one of these terms must divide m. Or I mean, uh, m must divide one of these terms, I'm sorry. Uh, we know that m cannot divide p because GCD, because GCD of p and m equals 1. So they have no common factors. That means that m has no choice but to divide b1 minus b2. So we say m divides b1 minus b2. Right? What does that imply? That implies that b1 minus b2 over m equals some m, which is an element of uh, the natural numbers. Right? So that's that has to be a integer, basically. So, um, and let's split this. We say b1 over m minus b2 over m equals m. Let me draw a dividing line. This is getting a little jumbled. Okay. Now, do you see why this is not going to work? So, what did we state before? Remember here we said b1 and b2 are less than m. 
So if these are both less than m, then b1 over m is some fraction that's going to be less than 1, right? And again, b2 over m is some fraction that's less than 1. So is it possible to have some fraction? Let's draw a quick number line. 0 to 1. So both of these b1 over m and b2 over m both fall somewhere somewhere in this range. Is it possible to subtract something in this range and something in this range? And remember, b1 and b2 are not the same. Okay, so I guess I didn't state that. So b1 and b2 obviously are not the same. Is it possible to get, if you subtract something less than 1 in this range, something less than 1 in this range, to get a whole number? So we can't. So we've arrived at a contradiction, which says that our original assumption assume that a remainder is created more than once is false and that means that every single uh, remain every single b from 0 to m minus 1 corresponds to a unique remainder from um, from 0 to m minus 1 which proves that there is a Frobenius number so this has been a full thorough uh, coverage of the Frobenius problem and um, until next time